after a quick bus ride, we're now here at Chun Wan, and I think this is the venue, right? Okay, let's find the venue. Let's find the venue. This is the first time I'm speaking in a very, very long time, and it's gonna be for New York Times. So I gotta, gotta ace it. Gotta do really well. All right, made it now here in the venue. I'm about to start the speech. A lot of people are here. Actually, a bigger crowd than expected, but let's do this. I'd like to introduce the next speaker, a young and successful TV personality and actor, Richard Huan. Having grown up in Hong Kong and the Philippines, Richard belongs to a generation of third culture, millennials who have spent their youth in different countries. His multicultural upbringing has equipped him with fluency in a remarkable total of five languages and dialects. A round of applause for Richard. All right, Richard, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Ms. Haleda, for that wonderful introduction. And of course, thank you for having me here today to speak in front of everyone. Let me first start with a very brief version of my life. My name is Richard Wan, and I was born to a second-generation Filipino-Chinese family. I moved here to Hong Kong with my parents when I was only one month old. You see, when I was growing up, I never thought of being an actor or a celebrity. I did a little bit of modeling when I was studying, and out of nowhere, I got invited to go on a live program on national TV. And during that time, I was just a broke college kid, just wanted some quick money, quick cash. And so I was like, you know what, I'm just going to do it. Turns out, the TV audience loved me so much that everyone was tweeting about it. The main reason was because they think I look like a K-pop artist. So my name was trending worldwide throughout the whole show and even a couple hours after that. My Instagram followers skyrocketed from less than 1,000 to over 10,000. Even fan accounts, fan groups were created on Facebook. I even had a Wikipedia page. You know you made it if you have a Wikipedia page. In. And this all happened in 24 hours. From a nobody, amateur, model, student, I felt like I became a superstar. And when I was in Indonesia last year, this happened. These were all Indonesians. I mean, at first I thought it's because they thought I, I was Kim Soo Hyun, Gam Sao Yin. You guys know who that is. This guy. I mean, whether or not we do actually look alike, I'll leave it for you guys to judge, okay? Social media have created a platform for everyone to share their opinions. For the first time in human history, we have a platform to share our views. Our voices are finally heard. You know, to spread good news, to spread positivity, to spread love. That's great and everything. But it also created a culture where people live their lives based on other people's opinion. You know, people need to remember that likes do not determine how good the content is. What's worse is that the content nowadays that, are gen that generates the most hits the most likes, the most views, are silly contents with clickbaits like prank videos, controversial videos, or, 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 or even fake news, and, and really just stuff that has no substance at all. The mobility that technology has provided us is also slowly destroying human interactions. It continuously disconnects us from the real world around us. Instead of spending quality time in person with your friends and family, we constantly just send each other text messages, WhatsApp messages, Telegram messages. My point is, where will this eventually lead to? Will we get to the point where we don't know how to interact with other people in real life anymore? With all these problems, I always ask myself, is social media or digital disruption healthy for the future? Life is not a popularity contest. It never is, never was, and never will be. It's not about the number of followers, the number of likes, the number of comments that you get. It's about what you stand for, what you believe in, because for so long, people have been so obsessed with the numbers on social media. People often forget what's important. It's the person behind all of that stuff. It's all about the substance, the credibility, the beliefs, the vision, and the heart. But with over 2 billion active users on Facebook, with over 500 million active users on Instagram, 
over 55 billion WhatsApp messages being sent daily, this digital and social media revolution completely, completely, completely changed how this world works. And it will continue to do so in the coming years. But at the end of the day, how do you take in all these changes and how do you make most out of all these changes is entirely up to you. Thank you so much. Okay, now let's talk about what made you guys join a competition. So I've, obviously, I knew of the New York Times. I, I respected it as like a really uh, established like, a new, uh, newspaper that you know I respected personally. My parents going like, "Oh, I bet you can't win this <laughs> writing competition." Whoa, <laughs> wait, wait. And I'm like, "Oh, wrong. challenge accepted." She's right. Yeah, right? You want to get your voice heard. It's true. Yeah, get try hard. Say what you care about, not just what you think they want to hear. Perfect platform to really get your voice out there. So, deadline is September 30, 2019. So, all start writing. Again. Yes. So, really? Yeah. Yeah. Can, can I participate, or am I too old for this? Uh, I think I might be too old for this. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> <laughs>